Hi, Allison. I would love for you as a longtime faculty member and educator with the Institute to go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience in teaching and in reference to the rehab ultrasound course that you have created for the Institute. So my name is Allison Ariel. I live and work in the Denver metro area. I have been teaching with Herman and Wallace for oh, I want to say 12 years, something like that. I like to tell people that I got into pelvic floor through the back door. Um, <laughs> and because I actually first started using ultrasound, actually, before I got into pelvic floor rehab. And I was using ultrasound to help back pain patients, say for iliac joint patients. And I was having patients have their incontinence improve as well. So because of that, I started getting referrals for incontinence and issues with that. And since I was having and treating these patients, I decided I should take a course and the rest is history, right? So that's kind of how I got into it. It's actually through the ultrasound. And that is one of the first courses that I wrote was the ultrasound course. Oh, wow. I did not know that. And so in reference to rehab ultrasound, I feel like over time, we've just seen not only the research correlate to what we tend to see in the clinic and also enlighten some of the, the results or even the explanatory mechanisms, but also the affordability is really right now at a place where it's so much more accessible for folks who might have a private clinic or not a lot of funding to be able to afford it. What else have you seen with the technology over the time that you've been using it that you find really useful for our professions? Yes, I, I love ultrasound and I tell people when they get one that it's gonna change their practice. It's just... Right now, one of the downfalls that might be is that we don't have a code so that we can get reimbursed for it, but the way that you can market it, you get so much more patients, so many more patients than you would get without having one, that it pays for itself within the first few years, especially now that it's so affordable. I have neurosurgeons that send patients to the, the, the pelvic floor program because they want their patients to get the ultrasound training. I have back surgeons and orthopedic surgeons sending patients. So they're not truly a pelvic floor patient, but they're coming in for pelvic floor type of training just because they want them to have that ultrasound training for the transverse abdominis and lumbar multifidus. And I can't tell you how many patients I have seen that I've worked with that have gone to PT, that have gone to chiropractors, that have gone to and had surgery or avoided surgery, and they are at the end of their line and they call me and they're like, what do you do that's different? Because I can't do it again. I just can't do it again. And those patients actually get better and they return to their activities and they return to their sport. So as a clinician that works in rehab, it's so rewarding to be able to work with those patients that haven't been able to get better and you can see them make progress and get back to sports or get back to daily living. So the, the price point has lowered quite a bit, which is really exciting. And then within the pelvic floor world, we're seeing a lot more research on how we can use this for different patients, not just female patients that don't want to have their clothes removed, but the male patients. There's some recent research out there that's really pushing that we truly need to use ultrasound on our post-prostatectomy patients. And that the that's a new, a new article out that's been out within the last year and a half of Paul Hodges that really discusses that digital palpation is not enough for our post-prostatectomy patients. You really need to be using ultrasound to retrain these patients. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. But, but when you look on the orthopedic side and looking at patients with back, there's so much research out there as well, too, that a specific stabilization program is helpful in these patients getting better and knowing what to do so they aren't having to come back into therapy year after year after year every time they feel they are their back up. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that when folks come to the course, ideally, they've got a really good working knowledge of anatomy itself and also an understanding of how a lot of the, the principles work in terms of general orthopedic rehabilitation as well as pelvic floor rehab. What is covered in the course? Is it just a lot of practical information? Is it helping folks understand the research and the technology? Or how do you tend to describe yeah. what's in the course itself? 
It's it's a little bit of both. And I'll tell you, I've had participants have taken the course and even without an ultrasound, they felt like it was very beneficial in them just being able to try address their back pain patients. So in the course, it is made for someone who has never seen an ultrasound, but then we do go into a little bit more advanced techniques as well too. So you don't have to have prior experience at all. Even if you're not quite aware of some of all the research that's, that's out there on a specific stabilization program, I go over all of that. So I go the first part of the course is very, it's very evidence-based. There's a lot of research and a couple lectures that really show specific stabilization, working on the transverse abdominus and lumbar multifidus really affects the back and the stability of the back and helping this and singling it out and then strengthening it can make a difference in this patient getting better or not. So we have all of the research. And then once I introduce the, all of the research and kind of the theory behind why this is useful and how it's such a useful tool, then we get into using the ultrasound as a, as a tool in our clinical practice. Then we have specific diagnoses for each different topic that we are addressing, the uh, abdominal midline, transverse abdominus, lumbar multifidus, pelvic floor. We'll have a specific lecture just for that on this is how you handle the transducer, this is the research behind it, and a lot of practice images. So you can see correct things and incorrect things in the lecture, and then we break for lab. And the labs are actually one of the things that's so different about this course is compared to other things that you can get and, and join online. A lot of the other courses that are out there are not hands-on. And so, yes, you can take them, you can learn to look at an image, but there's a big disconnect between looking at an image and being able to obtain that image yourself. And so with this course, we really teach hands-on and there will be ultrasounds at every location and each participant will get as much hands-on practice as we can within the each lab time. I like participants to change bodies. So the unit are on as many bodies as they can during the labs mm -hmm. and practice handling the transducer and obtaining the images themselves. Wonderful. You know, can you describe a little bit of that learning curve? Because I think Rehab clinicians tend to really uh, want to understand things. You know, some of us are, well, just give me the tool and then describe it as I go. And other folks really want to figure it out beforehand. What are you hearing from people over the years in terms of what that learning curve is? You know, when we teach the pelvic floor series, ideally, we want people to be able to show up that first day after their course and have applicable skills and enough confidence to, to try things with their patients and to really learn what works and, and what they might want to go back and learn more about. What are you seeing with that learning curve for, for folks so they don't feel too intimidated by this new, this new tool? Yeah. I think the way that we go through in the course, we start with the muscles that are easier to image and easier to actually see and view. And we start with the easier things and then we move into the things that may be a little bit more difficult and challenging. I have had people that have had ultrasound and used it in the past, but they weren't able to view the lumbar multifidus, for example, and they take the course and like, oh, now I can see it. Now I know what I'm doing. So I feel like the learning curve is pretty good once people get their hands on it and they get the feedback feedback. This is what you're doing right. This is what you can do to improve it. This is, you know, how you, this is where we're looking for just to zoom out a little bit. That's all that needs to be, you know, taken. Having someone guide them through that. I feel like clinicians actually pick it up very pretty quickly. And then the more practice they get, the more it's kind of ingrained that muscle memory, the, the memory of imaging is more ingrained into them. Most therapists or, and, and clinicians are ready to start imaging the next week. The downfall might be is if they don't have an ultrasound machine mm -hmm. <laughs> to practice on yet, like if it takes a couple of months for their for their clinic to actually purchase one and get into it, but they still review it. Uh, one of the other things that I have in my course is I have protocols where if someone doesn't get a, ma a machine for six months to a year, they can actually just pull these papers out of the manual and look at them. And it goes by step-by-step -step directions, what you're looking for, what you're not looking for, or what you're wanting to avoid. So if someone has that scenario where they take the course, they feel great about it, but then it takes them a year to get their unit. They can actually mm -hmm. pull those out, have the step-by-step -step instructions right in front of them and all in one place instead of having to go through all the individual lectures. Terrific. And you have this course designed for sort of general a use and then a little bit more pelvic health applications. Yes. So can you sort of yes. describe what that looks like and how someone might choose which course they want to sign up for? 
Yeah. So there's two different courses. One is a two day course with a, a little bit of online pre learning. The two day course, the first two days is really geared for orthopedic back pain type of patients. It's using the ultrasound, learning to use the ultrasound and applying it to anyone that needs to strengthen their core muscles for their back. We go over the transverse abdominis, the lumbar multifidus, midline of abdomen, and looking at the linea alba and the pelvic floor. So we are still doing pelvic floor, but through the abdomen. And I've had many orthopedic therapists that have never taken a pelvic floor class take this course and they then go and apply it to their orthopedic patients. And so there's that course. The second course is all of that included, but the third day is really pelvic floor imaging, where we're doing transperineal imaging, looking at the anterior compartment. I'm recently, or this course, I'm actually expanded it and I'm adding posterior compartment and external and internal anal sphincters as well too. So those, yeah. the third day is all this information and I'm looking at the retrovesical angle and the prolapses and what's going on with pelvic floor contractions, male and female, and, and seeing the supportive function of the pelvic floor. And if there isn't that supportive function, what we're seeing and how this relates to symptoms that patients may have. Wonderful. Well, it sounds like you have put so much work into this course and uh, I'm just sure a lot of blood, sweat and tears. So it's, uh, it's just a wonderful resource that folks can have. And thanks again. And thank you. I know that participants have been getting a lot out of it and we'll, we'll get even more out of the additions that you've talked about. Yeah, it's a fun class. So I hope people uh, consider taking it. Wonderful. Thanks, Holly. Thank you so much.